back to the show. This is The Law Show on CL 650. I fought the law and the law won. I fought the law and the law won. All right, this is The Law Show. I'm Zach Spencer. This is CL 650. We're talking about protecting yourself from a lawsuit or loss. Joe Murphy and Jeff Neuenberg from Murphy Batista are here. Now, Jeff, we're going to get you in the mix mm-hmm. now. Um, I lend you my car and you drive away. I'm not saying you personally, but uh, usually as an example, and you get in an accident with my car. Uh, who is liable in that situation? Yeah, so people need to think very carefully about uh, who they entrust their vehicles to or their keys to. Um, uh, if uh, the in, in British Columbia, we have uh, uh, the Motor Vehicle Act, and uh, one section of that act uh, uh, effectively uh, makes it uh, so that uh, um, owners of vehicles or uh, people leasing vehicles are responsible for uh, or are liable for uh, uh, accidents in which somebody else is is driving their vehicle provided they've given consent uh, 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 to uh, have that other person drive so as long as uh, um, you know the the car isn't stolen uh, you're you're responsible for who's driving your car and that goes for anybody in the house. I'll get, I'll get, uh, You're, yeah, anyone who lives in the same house is is assumed to have the consent. Okay. So even though it's a, a, um, somebody who's just 16 and they take mom and dad's car maybe without their knowledge, that's this consent they're, is still they're there. They're assumed to have consent, but you can what's called rebut that presumption by showing that, in fact, they didn't have consent. The nice thing about ICBC, one of the many nice things, is in the event there's a problem with insurance coverage, example, the drunk driver, ICBC pays out to the people injured by the drunk driver. They get paid the same. And then they turn around to the drunk driver and say, okay, you owe us $100,000 for what we paid out. So the good thing is that the person who's the victim of the drunk driver isn't further victimized by the insurance company saying, we're not going to pay. Right. Because private insurance companies say, we're not going to pay. This fellow was drunk. He breached the policy. We're not going to pay. Um, and it's one of, the, uh, one of the many benefits of ICBC. So they look after their own first, or, and then they go after. So how, how, uh, how much do they get back do they do they do they go on and sue this person like uh, typically yeah. if it's a hundred thousand dollars do they get back ten thousand or is it just a uh, lot I, I think they get back a little bit of money um the way the system works is icbc puts someone who owes the money into a system almost like a little phone book and that person can't renew their driver's license and they can't insure a vehicle um so that's designed to pressure these people into paying up but i suspect they probably recover less than 10 cents on the dollar because these people simply go underground they take their vehicle and they put it in someone else's name so i saw uh, uh, i was at an auto plant store and a fellow was coming in and buying these temporary permits for his car at a week at a time or something like this and he can't get insurance but he obviously can get this temporary permit and it's an expensive way to get insurance, but uh, I guess there's coverage there. So there, yes. there's a ways around these things. I just thought, it was, uh, as your experience, what, what uh, kind of recourse the insurance company has to get their money back when somebody, uh, you know, somebody like dr- a drunk dr- uh, driver is at fault, really. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just another reason, uh, um, you know, people, if they're making unwise decisions like uh, um, drinking and driving, think about the, the criminal aspect of it or perhaps fines or that sort of thing but uh it's another thing that they should be thinking about that uh if if they hurt somebody there might be a lawsuit against them and and uh if uh they're they're breached by their insurance they might be without their driver's license for uh uh until until uh uh uh, they either pay back the uh the amount that they owe to icbc at the end of the day or uh um, the the corporation allows them to uh, to to license again, so uh, um, it it, it uh, obviously uh, those sorts of things are devastating for everybody involved. But it's just another reason uh, uh, to think about those sorts of things before you go down that road. Here, I'll give you I'll give you a situation. <laughs> it, I'm driving a sports car, and it's got big nice big wheels on it with sporty summer tires, right? And it snows. And I drive that car, and I go down Highway 99, and I get in an accident because I don't have the proper equipment for the weather conditions, and I cause an accident. Is there any liability 
uh, extra liability or, or how is it just basically does ICBC come down and say who's at fault in that situation? Yeah, it's who's at fault. ICBC is not going to look at you and say, well, you didn't have really good tires on the car, therefore this is partially yours and you're going to have to pay because that's why people buy insurance. They buy insurance because something bad happened. They were negligent or the driver of the car was negligent. Um, and the insurance company uh, can't sort of look to the person. Here's, I think, a better example. Uh, if you have a convertible and you drive it over to a 7-Eleven to get a Slurpee and you leave the car running at the curb as you run in to get the Slurpee and you come out and surprise, surprise, someone's stolen your Porsche uh, with the keys in the ignition, the ICBC still pays. Even though you're dumb, um, well, I think <laughs> yeah, you're more than dumb. <laughs> yeah, the the uh, another common example that's uh, moving away from auto is uh, um, is uh, you know the uh, leaving leaving the iron on at home yeah. or or uh, you know uh, leaving the bathtub on leaving the bathtub on hanging uh, um, you shouldn't never do that hanging uh, dry cleaning on the sprinkler head or those sorts of things uh, you shouldn't do that but uh, um, stuff happens but. Yeah, sometimes uh, people do silly things, and that's uh, that's what insurance is for. But uh, um, it's it's really when you do things like uh, that are are criminal or that sort of thing that you're. Uh, um, and we'll talk some more about some of those other things you can do that uh, uh, could do could, affect your coverage. Could yeah. affect one, one your of, coverage. One is um, you know a lot of people have children that are coming of uh, driving age and they want to drive and insurance is expensive. If you're a new driver and you're driving a car, that can be expensive. So a lot of people will say that mom is the primary driver of of the car, but you know the, the, the child is driving the car more often. So what are the legalities there and where are the major pitfalls that you see? Well, I, I think, uh, um, Zach, it's very common for some young guy to have bought his first car and be so excited about it, but realizing that because he's a new driver and because, let's say, it's a Mustang convertible, his p premiums are going to be huge. And he, he thinks, well, if I put it in mum's name and she's the principal driver, then the premium drops by half. So there's a, there's a lot of dollars as a good reason to do it that way. But if you have an accident and ICBC finds out that you've misstated the facts in uh, getting the policy, they then void your insurance. So they're, they're going to pay any one you ran into, they're going to pay anyone who was injured, but when you say, and my car was totaled, they say, tough. Um, and there was, a case, there was a case a few years ago in Vancouver. It was a young fellow who got a, a Mustang, 5-liter Mustang, and with a manual transmission, in his mother's name with her as a principal driver, and ICBC said, we're not paying for the car because we think he... The son was a principal driver, and that wasn't told us. So the woman sued ICBC, and it goes to trial, and she's giving evidence that this is her car, that her son only drives it when she sends him on an errand. And the lawyer for ICBC asks one brilliant question. It says, Madam, could you describe the shift pattern <laughs> on that transmission? And she was like a deer in headlights. Yeah, she had no neutral idea. Drive. TR neutral no drive. No idea what <laughs> she he was talking about. Yeah, because in fact she never drove the car. Exactly. And the case failed. Obviously. Yeah. There, there's been. Uh, I don't know if it's the the same case as that, but there was one where a uh, uh, young young uh, teenage boy had a had a car insured it uh, in as his parents as the primary driver, and of course, uh, as as young teenagers uh, do that are happy about their brand new car, he had taken a bunch of photos and and put them up on Facebook. Uh, you know him lying across the hood of the car, all that sort of stuff, showing My off new his baby. car. My new and, baby. And uh, and of course, all that stuff uh, um, might come out if uh, if there's a lawsuit of that sort of thing. So uh, um, you know, it it uh, uh, obviously uh, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, teenagers might might make very clear to their friends that, you know, this is my car and uh, um, you might take lots of photos and hold it out as their car and they're driving it most of the time. So. See, yeah, Zach, let's take that yeah. same example. The mother who says to the son, okay, put it in my name. If he, the son, causes a bad accident, let's say ICBC pays out $100,000 in damages on the claim, they're going to turn around and sue the mother for the $100,000 mm -hmm. because the policy is voided. Right. So this woman who thinks she's and doing it was her in son her a favor, yeah. yes, she's she's the uh, the the insured. Um, so it may appear attractive to save some money on that first car, 
but it's so risky and so foolish for the parents to have the car in their name. Now, here's um, a uh, here's something I've always wondered about this is, okay, so your, your child turns 16 and they start driving, and you still are the primary driver of the car, and they are just going to drive occasionally, obviously with a new, uh, with the learners and the novice uh, situation we have now, with the parents in the car and what the, does that all count towards being, uh, your, get your 5% discount every year, or do you have to have your own policy in order to qualify for that? Because what I'm thinking is you could get your children uh, years of experience driving the family car, and then when they get their own car, does that count those two or three years? I believe it does. I but, believe they, they look at when the license was issued, in a, and uh, ICBC has access to all the driver's license records, so they mm-hmm. can tell when someone did get their license. They can look and see if there's any infractions. But they haven't uh, had their own policy. Yeah, uh, a broker will be able to tell you better than uh, yeah, we just, can. But, but I, I just wondered I, about I that think, because when my, when my yeah. son's a few years away from that situation, is it a good idea to, to get them driving earlier just yeah. to get their, get their record it, to clean, right? I think it's a good idea for them to get, uh, you know, there's lots of kids that uh, are putting off getting a driver's yeah. license. I, you know, have cousins and that sort of thing that are doing the same thing. Um, the average uh, age now, by the way, is yeah. uh, 21 years old. Uh, but, so average. it's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's. Is, I think it's a good idea to get your license. Uh, and uh, my understanding, and broker can tell you better than I can, but uh, uh, that uh, that they they look at how long you've had your your driver's license. And I don't necessarily think it matters necessarily how long policy, how yeah. long you've had the policy or that sort of thing. Oh, great conversation. Yeah. We're talking about protecting yourself uh, in a lawsuit when it comes to motor vehicles. Uh, Joe Murphy and Jeff Neuenberger here from Murphy Batista. They have offices in downtown Vancouver and Kelowna. When we come back, we're going to talk about uh, what you should keep in mind when you're looking for insurance to make sure you're covered in uh, in the case of a lawsuit or loss. Next on The Law Show on CL 650. There's more of the show still ahead. This is The Law Show on CL 650.